Welcome to House of History. Japanese holdouts after the Second World War are quite the never-ending source of interesting stories. Japanese soldiers were known for their resilience, dedication to the emperor, and often preference to death over surrender. On this channel, I have already discussed the last missing Japanese soldier that was found 63 years later after he was sent off to war, and the other curious still of Hiro Onoda, the Japanese lieutenant that waged a guerrilla warfare on the island, was the last Japanese soldier to surrender nearly 30 years after the war had ended. But besides these two cases, several other Japanese holdouts didn't quite hold out 30 years, but nevertheless refused to surrender for an incredibly long time. Right, so the first case wasn't just one soldier, but two. Sergeant Masashi Ito and Private Bunzo Minakawa both served in the Japanese army during the Second World War. They remained together, becoming one of the last Japanese holdouts after the war had ended. Ito was a machine gunner in the army and was stationed on the island of Guam. When the Americans invaded the island in summer 1944, Ito, together with Minagawa and another soldier, got separated from their unit. Most of the defenders on the island were killed, and Minagawa and Ito were some of the few survivors and retreated into the jungle in order to continue their fight. Just like many Japanese soldiers, the two learned how to survive in the jungle, foraging for food and living in makeshift huts. But in August 1945, Japan surrendered after the atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Following Japan's defeat, plans were made to rebuild the country and prosecute those responsible for the war. One issue that kind of faded to the background was the Japanese guerrillas that were scattered over hundreds of islands in the Pacific. All of them received the explicit command to fight until the bitter end, Ito and Minagawa as well. Now, following the end of the war, it was known many guerrillas were hiding in the jungle on small islands. Authorities on Guam launched a campaign to try and convince missing Japanese soldiers the war was over by dropping leaflets and newspapers on the island. Men like Ito and Bunza refused to believe they were real, convinced by their superiors that the US would wage psychological warfare on them and would use tricks such as these. For another 16 years, Ito and Minagawa were in a pretty uninhabited situation. Minagawa later described to a journalist, We ate roots, worms and grasshoppers. It's no use telling because you wouldn't believe it. You can't imagine such a life. We were sleeping every night in the rain on the ground. They lasted for years, but in May 1960, Ito and Minagawa had a crucial encounter with locals. A confused and weakened Minagawa was captured. It prompted Ito to surrender two days later. He was treated at a nearby American military base when he realized the war was over and he wouldn't be tortured or killed by the US soldiers. Eventually, Ito and Minagawa spent nearly 16 years in the jungle of Guam. When they returned to the Japanese mainland and visited their hometowns, both men had the bewildering experience of reading their own gravestones. Their mothers had commissioned them, convinced the men had died during the war. After the war ended, Ito tried to reintegrate into Japanese society. He got married and he had children and a movie was even made about his life. He also published a relatively successful autobiography, The Emperor's Lost Soldiers, published in 1967. What he didn't know was that he and Minagawa weren't the actual lost Japanese soldiers still out there. As the book was published, there were multiple other Japanese soldiers still holding out, convinced the Second World War wasn't over yet. And there even was another soldier on the small island Ito and Minagawa resided on, Guam. Remaining on the small island of Guam after Ito and Minagawa surrendered was a Japanese sergeant, Soichi Yokoi. He arrived on Guam during the war in February 1943, and just like Ito and Minagawa, he went into hiding when the United States attacked the island. Together with nine other soldiers, he foraged in the jungle and lived from nature for years. They didn't necessarily stick together, as Yokoi later reminisced, but did know of each other's existence. Yokoi lived in a cave he dug himself, using his surroundings to create shelter and clothing. Over time, six soldiers moved away, leaving Yokoi with two others. That was until 1964, when the other two soldiers died during a flood. For the next eight years, Yokoi lived on his own. So... What's interesting is that Ito and Minagawa knew Yokoi from meeting him on the island in 1944 during the war, and they knew it was possible that he was still alive in the wilderness on the island. They actively tried to get him out of the jungle. Multiple times they broadcast to the jungle that the war was over, but Yokoi never revealed himself. 
Eventually, Yokoi was legally declared deceased by the Japanese authorities, since there was no success in getting him out by dropping letters and leaflets and newspapers, nor did the broadcasts work. Eventually, in January 1972, he ran into two local men on the island of Guam. The men were catching shrimp when they ran into Yokoi, who perceived them as a threat and attacked them. But because of his life in the jungle and poor diet, the men could easily overpower the weakened Yokoi. The story goes that Yokoi was afraid he would be tortured and killed after capture, but the men carried him to their village, stopped at their house for some hot soup, and only then delivered Yokoi to the local commissioner's office. When the commissioner discovered Yokoi's true identity, Japanese authorities were informed, and the process was set in motion to get Yokoi to return to Japan. And once he arrived, Yokoi revealed his motives to stay in the jungle that long. He said, it is with much embarrassment that I return. So why didn't Yokoi simply give in when letters about the war were being dropped or even when his former brothers in arms, Minagaba and Ito, asked him to? In his own words, from his autobiography, I didn't come out because I was afraid. The spirit of Japan is to die the way the cherry blossoms go, without shame. I was afraid I wouldn't go that way. Yokoi even revealed he knew the war had been over since 1952 but refused to surrender out of shame. When he returned to Japan, just like Ito and Minagawa, he was able to return to his village where he was born to read his own gravestone. When Yokoi finally passed away in 1997 at the age of 82, he was buried with the same gravestone his mother commissioned for him over 40 years before, after he was legally declared dead. Now, after Yokoi was discovered, there was another Japanese soldier holding out on an island in the Philippines. Hiro Onoda would not surrender for another two years, and his still is quite the extraordinary one. If you want to know more about that, make sure you check out my video on him. The link is both on an end card on screen and in the description. Thank you very much for watching this video. I would also like to thank all my patrons for their generous support. If you enjoy House of History and want to support my work, consider checking me out on Patreon. For just $1 a month, you will gain access to the exclusive Patreon series. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.